A ball is thrown horizontally from the roof of a building 75 meters tall with a speed of 4.6 meters per second. How much later does the ball hit the ground? So the first thing we're going to do is write down our given information. So we know that since the ball is thrown horizontally initially with a speed of 4.6 meters per second, that v naught x is equal to 4.6 meters per second. And because it was only thrown horizontally, that means there is no vertical component. So v naught y is equal to 0 meters per second. We know that in the projectile motion, we're ignoring air resistance, wind, any type of thing like that, that our acceleration in the horizontal, the x direction, will be equal to 0. So ax is equal to 0 meters per second squared. And we also know the acceleration in the y direction is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is g, which has a value of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know the initial position of our object. So x naught is equal to 0 meters, and y naught is equal to 75 meters. Now we need to solve for what the time will be when our object hits the ground. Now using now looking at the three kinematics equations, v equals v naught plus a t, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x, and y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus 1 half a y t squared. Now we need one that corresponds to all of our given information here to solve for the time it takes for the object to fall down to the ground. So we can see that the best equation to use would be the third kinematics equation, y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus 1 half a y t squared. Because v equals v naught plus a t doesn't deal with any change in height, so we don't know when it will act, in fact hit the ground. And the second equation doesn't involve time, so that won't be helpful. So we're using the third kinematic equation, y equals y naught plus v naught y t plus 1 half a y t squared. Now, we're trying to solve for the time here. So we have a linear, one term is linear with respect to time, and the other is quadratic with respect to time, meaning it's raised to the power of 2. So t squared here is quadratic, t here is linear. Now the problem is, if both of these terms exist, we would have to use the quadratic equation in order to solve for t. But since we know that v naught y is equal to 0 meters per second, we know this term is equal to 0. So we can cancel that out right then and there and so save us some trouble with solving for t. So if we do that, we're now left with y equals y naught plus 1 half a y t squared. If we want to get t alone, we're first going to subtract y naught from both sides, giving us 1 half a y t squared is equal to y minus y naught. Now to solve for t squared alone, we're going to multiply by 2, divide by a y, giving us t squared is equal to 2 times. Now, this is y minus y naught times 2. So we have to show that we're subtracting these two first, and then multiplying by 2, and then dividing by a y. We now have to determine how to get t alone now. So for this, we have to take the square root of both sides. So we're left with t is equal to square root of 2 times y minus y naught all over a y. We now plug in our initial values. We would find that t is equal to 2 times our final height is going to be when we hit the ground. So that's 0 meters minus 75 meters, of, which is our initial height, over an acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared which would give us a time of plus or minus 3.9 seconds. And because our time has to be positive, we would have our time is equal to 3.9 seconds. So we want to know how long in the future it's going to take for the ball to hit the ground. So positive t, so t equals 3.9 seconds.
but B says how far from the building will it land. So we need to calculate the distance it's gone horizontally. So we have the three kinematics equations, V equals V naught plus A T, V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X, and X equals X naught plus V naught X T plus one half A X T squared. So off the base of this, we want to solve for the distance that we've gone. So the first kinematic equation doesn't involve any final position that we're going to wind up at, so this is not helpful. Second kinematic equation doesn't deal with the time it's going to take to reach there, because we don't know what its final velocity is going to be, so this doesn't prove to be helpful for us. So what we do know that will be helpful is the third kinematic equation. So x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a x t squared. Once again, we get into the problem of we have one term is linear with t and the other one is quadratic with t. But we're not solving for a time here, so we don't have to deal with the quadratic equation and the quadratic formula now. So we're just going to simplify this to a terms to which we can solve for the final position of our object. So we know that x0 is 0, so we can cancel out this term initially. And we also know that our acceleration in the horizontal direction, our x direction, is also 0. So x is 0, so we can cancel out this term as well. So we're left with x is equal to v0 t. This makes it a lot easier to solve for our final position now. So we're going to plug in our given values. So v naught x is equal to a 4.6 meters per second. And this is for a time of 3.9 seconds. So that's the time it takes for the object to fall that distance and hit the ground. So the distance that we would have covered in the horizontal range in this amount of time is equal to roughly 18 meters. So in a time of 3.9 seconds, the ball which is thrown horizontally from the roof of the building with a speed of 4.6 meters per second, would travel about 18 meters in the horizontal direction. Part C says, what is the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground? So we understand that when it's hitting the ground, so if we throw it off the building, and the ball is coming down, it's going to hit the ground, we understand that it still has its initial velocity in the horizontal, but we now have a velocity downwards. We now have a vertical component of velocity, which gives us a resultant velocity, which we have to solve for now, this V. So if we draw in here, we now have to solve for what the magnitude of our resultant is based off of V0x and Vy. So we have to solve for Vy and V0x at a time of 3.9 seconds. So to do that, we're going to use the equation Vy is equal to V0y plus Ayt, so the first kinematic equation. We know that V0y is equal to 0, so we can cancel out this term, leaving us Vy is equal to Ay times the time. So Vy is equal to, plugging in our values, negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.9 seconds. Vy would give us a value of negative 38 meters per second. If we now solve for Vx, Vx is equal to V0x plus Axt. We know that Ax is equal to 0, so we can cancel this term out leaving us Vx is equal to V0x, and we know that V0x is equal to 4.6 meters per second. Now, to solve for the resultant here, we have to apply the Pythagorean theorem. So we know V squared is equal to Vx squared plus Vy squared, and to solve for V, we take the square root of both sides, giving us v is equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. If we now plug in the values which we calculated for these two, 
we'd have v is equal to square root of 4.6 meters per second squared plus negative 38 meters per second squared. If we now calculated this out, we would find that our v is equal to roughly 38.3 meters per second. Now we've not used the significant figures here in this case because if we did this is not high enough to round this up so if we didn't use if we did use significant figures we would see that 4.6 meters per second squared plus the negative 38 meters per second squared and if we took the square root of that it would tell us that our answer is 38. This we know mathematically is not right because you have 38 squared plus some other thing squared and then you take the square root it's definitely going to be higher than 38. So we've deviated from the significant figures here to show that we in fact have an increase in velocity. So we're not breaking any mathematical rules here. So we are in fact going faster than what the significant figures would show us. Because it would show you 38 meters per second which is matching the velocity you have here which you know intuitively is not correct because we are adding to the value. So that's why we wrote the magnitude of the final velocity to be 38.3 meters per second.